Kenya's public debt has been increasing at an alarming rate in the last eight years. As of June this year, our public debt was 6.6 .6 trillion shillings. But how does debt affect the citizen beyond the common statements such as each Kenyan citizen, including those being born now, owes creditors at least 139,000 shillings due to public debt. So, beyond the clichés, what does it mean when the government keeps on getting loans? Lakini lazima tutafute pesa kwa sababu zetu hazitoshi ndio tuhakikishe ya kwamba the needs of the people are also met but we must borrow which I agree in a manner that we are sure we can actually service the debt that we incur. From 2013 to 2019, we've seen our public debt go from almost 1.2 trillion to about 6 trillion. You see, the whole economy is crumbling. When government has no revenues to invest in the economy, it means that everyone is going to suffer, and most of the time, it's the young people and the vulnerable people in the economy who will suffer most. Is Kenya on the verge of a debt distress? What is the implication of that moving forward? Africa Uncensored digs deep into these questions, seeking answers and highlighting how the appetite for foreign debt financed infrastructure has devastated various sectors in the country. My name is Ken Gishinga. The issue of Kenyan debt has been a long journey. And let me first by start by saying that uh, debt in, in of itself is not a problem. Almost every country in the world has debt. Typically for any government, uh, debt is normally paid through taxes. Uh, there are only two ways a government uh, raise revenue. One is through taxes. So the big challenge we are, we are facing in terms of managing our public debt is the economy has not been doing very well. So a lot of businesses are not able to provide the taxes that government needs to be able to service its debt. In 2013, Kenya's debt was 1.8 trillion shillings when Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto took over the government from President Kibaki. The debt has tripled to about 6.7 trillion shillings in just seven years, even surpassing the recommended debt to GDP ratio. The debt-to-GDP ratio is used to compare what a nation owes with what it produces. It also indicates the ability of the country to pay back its debt. The higher the debt-to-GDP ratio climbs, the higher the risk of defaulting on the debt. According to Treasury, the debt-to-GDP ratio is at 65.7%. IMF recommends that the ratios of public debt-to-GDP should not be higher than 40% for developing countries. Kenya first breached the debt threshold in 2016 when it rose to 50.6% of GDP. But why should this be of concern when some developed nations have surpassed their debt to GDP ratios by triple digit numbers? Of course we're in debt. So how do we deal with that? Uh, no, by the way, huh? when you talk about our debt, do you know what the debt of the Japanese government is? Oh, what is Japan's debt? I'm not really concerned about do, Japan. Do, 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 do you know, do you know what the Kenyan debt is? Yes. What is as, it? As I said. What is it? Right now, some figures at 4.5 trillion shillings. Don't talk 8. about, I said, as a percentage of GDP. Talk like an economist. 56% of GDP. Of GDP. Yes. All right? Yes. What is Japan's uh, debt? I'm not in Japan, so I'm not Japan's concerned about Japan. Japan's debt Kenya. is over 100% of their GDP. Japan. Okay? All right? Because, my friend, the issue of debt is not about incurring debt. It's about how you use that debt. A lot of people say that the U.S. has over 100% debt to GDP. Um, Japan has the highest in the world, 200% GDP. But we forget uh, that these countries, first of all, borrow in their own currency. The U.S. will borrow in dollars and Japan will borrow in yen. So in the worst case scenario, they can really print their way out of that debt. Out of the 6.7 trillion shillings debt, foreign currency debt is 3.5 trillion shillings up from 569.1 billion shillings in June 2010. 
Kenya's largest foreign currency lender is China, which accounts for over 70% of the external bilateral debt with a portfolio of approximately $6.2 billion, which largely come on semi-concessional terms. If it's non-concessional, most probably it's, it's a commercial loan that will come, like some of them we saw coming from China where you need to pay them in less than 10 years. You'll begin paying the interest within less than 10 years. And that's what many people have been asking questions. So if government invests, say, in a road or invests in a railway line, would you say that within 6 to 10 years the investment has been plowed back into the economy to the extent that we are able to collect taxes, to begin to repay that loan is not possible. It, it does not make economic sense. So my name is Kenneth Okwaro. I work with the Africa Center for People, Institutions and Society. Um, our organization does research in public policy and analysis around how governments implement policies and how they impact the lives of their citizens. The main difference when one borrows in foreign currency such as the dollar as opposed to borrowing in local currency such as the shilling is that the borrower is exposed to currency risk. So, for instance, if today a young farmer by the name Wanjiku takes a thousand loan from a bank at the exchange rate of a hundred shillings, she will take home one hundred thousand shillings. When her loan matures in a year, what Wanjiku will pay back will depend on the changes in the value of the dollar against the shilling. If the shilling gained against the dollar and the exchange rate is 90 shillings, she will be smiling to the bank because she will pay back 90,000 shillings plus the interest. However, if the shilling weakened against the dollar to the rate of 110, she will pay back 110,000 shillings plus the interest. So, when Kenya borrows in foreign currency, we are exposed to such dynamics and in current times we have been on the losing end as the shilling has not been gaining but weakening. Problem with debt is if you use it to consume, all right? I am confident that Kenyan debt, which is why it is so solid, yeah, is for infrastructural development that will benefit not just our generation, but future generations. Are we borrowing for the right reasons? In many cases, the initial reasons why it begins are very noble. We want a road that is going to connect this place to this other place to increase, you know, uh, movement and transportation and stuff. But eventually, either we change those plans, we adjust them, we increase the costs, uh, then it just becomes weird. And then it's something a freelancer. I'm writing for, uh, for Deutsche Welle, uh, Germany, and uh, Aberdeen in Hong Kong. China has bigger ambitions and longer-term plans. There is an official document called China's Second Africa Policy Paper, published in uh, December of uh, 2015. In this lengthy document, we can find uh, the words economy, culture, society, uh, political parties, governments, military, uh, technology, almost everything except democracy, freedom, and human rights. This is the essential core of the uh, Chinese model. The point is not uh, so much the debt, debt trap itself, but how much power African people and African countries have to negotiate. Most of the China loans are for building infrastructure and they come with conditions such as Chinese contractors are given the contracts to implement the projects. Some of the projects implemented through the loans include the Lamu Port 3 bus for 48 billion shillings and the SGR project, Mombasa to Nairobi, which cost 327 billion shillings. The latter has been an emotive and controversial subject among many Kenyans. I think the challenge most economists have wrapping their mind around it is the fact that over $3 billion was spent to it, about 320 billion shillings. When people benchmark with other countries, um, 
it becomes very expensive when you look at Ethiopia. Even the landscape of Ethiopia is different. But generally, if you look at SGRs around the world and look at it per kilometer basis, people feel we paid way too much. Despite growing concern about the cost of the SGR, the Nairobi Mombasa project was completed and launched in May 2017, just three months to the general election. This came with a promise of a better and prosperous future for the port of Mombasa and a boost in the economy of the coastal region. And the investments that we're making can only increase the level of business for Mombasa port and increase the number of people who will be employed in this port that will increase the prosperity of the people of Mombasa. Even though they were promised a brighter future as a result of the SGR, this was far from the truth. I was Salim Karama. I was a wa transport. Na makazi yangu ni Mombasa. Tumekuwa na kazi ya transport kwa muda mrefu. Manake ilikuwa ni awaze. Lakini kufikia miaka hii ya karibuni miwili mitatu, mambo yalibadilika kibiashara Mombasa. Kwa hivyo tu, tumepata madhara makubwa kibiashara transport kutokana na wakati SGR ama serikali ikilazimisha makasha ya pakiliwe kwa njia ya train. In a bid by the government to increase its revenues to enable payment of the SGR loan, the Ministry of Transport gave a directive that all goods from the port of Mombasa had to be transported through the SGR to the Nairobi Inland Container Depot. This directive was later on reversed, but the Mombasa economy has never recovered. What we came to engage the national government about is <coughs> how do we handle the transition? What mitigation measures should be put in place so that the residents, the business uh, people, stakeholders can live side by side with the SGR? And we said that because the directive had been issued by the CG of KRA and the MD of KPA without full consultations, within two days actually, we directed that it be reversed and it remains suspended. However, the business community still feels the impact of the directive several months after the CS claimed to have reversed it. Emeniathiri mimi, kama mimi Salim Karama, kuna vijana ambao ilikuwa ni mewajiri kazi katika easy truck, mini ilikuwa na truck mbili. Truck moja zimekaa, imebidi ni peane mtu ile kichwa, deo ile kichwa nilikuambia, nilipeana kwa sababu hakuna kazi. Salim laments that he had a thriving business before the introduction of the SGR cargo train, but that is not the case anymore. Mimi sahi kama vile nivu kuambia hakuna income yoyote ambayo mimi napata kwa muda wa mwaka moja na nusu paka dakika hii. Hii gari unaona hapa ni yangu, hii gari ilikuwa na insurance comprehensive, imekufu hapa ndani ya yadi. Kwa hivyo, mimi sahi ni muasirika mkubwa sana katika kwa hali ya kiuchumi na yote imechangiwa na viongozi wetu ambao wanafanya ubwenyenye ama ule ukoloni mambo leo My name is Dennis Mbo. I'm the CEO for Kenya Transporters Association. The times are very hard with transporters because actually most of the transporters don't have the job and most of them close shops. You know with, if you have a truck the truck only makes money when when when, when the, the, the turnaround is high. When the trucks idling there's no money for that truck. It wears off. So sometimes you may be able to service it and it's not doing anything. So you service it with good parts, but then there's no money that it brings. So these this trucks, we need them to be on the road. A research conducted by the University of Nairobi School of Business in Mombasa last year revealed that Mombasa's economy will decrease by over 16 percent and over 8,100 jobs lost as a result of transporting cargo from the port of Mombasa through the SGR. The report goes further on its finding and states, I quote, in the event the proposal to convey all upcountry cargo through the SGR, then the implication to the port city of Mombasa's GDP and employment sustainability will be serious. Nikona almost one year, sijafanya kazi mahali. Pajina angu ni Ismail Rashid, truck driver, hiyo ndo kazi yanga. 
ambapo hakuna mtu ambaye atakakae bila kazi ushaona lakini unajikuta huko kazini na siwa tu ndio umetaka usiwe kazini ushaona changamoto moja ni kama hivyo sasa kazi pia zimepungua ushaona kwa sababu mwenyewe anasema na sisemi yani says GC for ma profession but can say ma profession cause nishafanya kazi hata nje nishafanya Saudi as a truck driver ushaona mezunguka Saudi yote ile all capital cities kwa tuna ushaona as i don't deserve to stay without a job for one year ushaona as a professional driver you know tena in your country paka say hata mimi nilikuwa niondoke in the Kuwait Rashid had prepared to leave the country in search of opportunities in the Middle East. However, just as soon as his visa came, the corona pandemic hit the world and his plans failed. So his only alternative was to continue looking for jobs locally. Unaenda kwa play mahali tajiri unakuta kwambia angalia gari hizi umesimama. Paka inabidi asompigia simu tukila sasa vipi bosi bado upo? Paka anakuambia wewe hapa bado kijanangu lakini angalia kwingine kokote ambako ukipata kwingine wefanya. One year size iko kazi paka size iko kazi na uko na family eh? na unajua mahoma hayaulizi ile kugonjeka ile mtu kwa mgonjwa hayulizi hati una pesa ndio nikuje hapo nikuletee ugon nilete homa malaria hapo naona Rashid believes that the SGR cargo train is the genesis of his problems ni SGR of course yes kwa sababu there is no time ati shindo za kazi mahali tena katika kampuni kama tatu ama nne ama tu mwenyewe ukikaa ukitembea katika hizi yadi as a driver unakuta trucks zimesimama hapo Though living in two different estates separated by the Mombasa Central Business District Gabriel Nyange and Rashid Ismail have two things in common They both worked in the transport sector and both are now jobless I'm the breadwinner of a very young family because I just got married two years ago and had my first daughter just approximately a year ago because she's now 7 months old. Okay, upande wa kazi watu kama sisi tumeathirika sana. Maana ke kwa sababu hii sijari ilivyoanza kutoa kazi kutoka Mombasa tu Nairobi imebidi makampuni ama kampuni zetu kwa like me personally nimekuwa affected. Tumekuwa retrenched, tumekuwa barua, turudi nyumbani. And unapata mtu kama mimi nilikuwa na loan already na kampuni so unapata ile miaka yenye nimefanya nimefanya only few years nikaanza fanya clearance na wao still ile pesa yangu inaenda yote kwa loan i'm just going home with nothing gabriel worked in a container freight station or popularly known as a cfs which is a warehouse where cargo belonging to various importers and exporters is consolidated before being imported or exported i remember in my company tulikuwa approximately 341 people and right now the company downsized its operation to 41 people so you unapata majority of the people have been negatively affected by the sgr manake tumeenda manyumbani na wengi tulianza pia mabiashara nini ipo so unapata pia biashara kwa ujumla aziende his wife was also employed in the transport sector and just like gabriel she too lost her job gabriel now drives a taxi and he says it does not generate enough income to sustain his young family unajua wakati uko kazi Okay you are guaranteed like each and every month kama ni monthly kama ni weekly unalipo each and every month uko na pay slip pay slip unajipanga wewe na family yako venye mtaishi according to the size of, of your pay slip lakini right now you want to find you have nothing you have nothing to bring home you have nothing left for you so unapata maisha na kwa ngumu sana CFSs have been among the worst hit by the SGR sending home thousands of their staff This was occasioned by the reduction in volumes and revenues. My name is uh, Khalif Khalifa. I am uh, a chair of the board of Muhuri, a human rights organization which is based in Mombasa. Companies can afford to move away from Mombasa, but people cannot afford relocating from Mombasa to other counties. And uh, this is not right. It is unconstitutional. You have CFS almost about 21 or 22 of them. Now they are rendered useless. Okay. Big merchant companies now they are closing or relocating to other ports like Dar es Salaam. Now all these thousands of people will lose their jobs. 
definitely they are losing. They've already lost. They're going to lose more and more and more. Okay? We don't understand why the government should uh, do such a thing like that. The point there is that businesses that would normally thrive when the tax environment is favorable, it's suddenly not safe or it's not viable. So, how much do truck owners lose when their trucks lie idle in the yards? I'm Douglas Chirchir, Operations Manager, Linear South Africa. We handle both import, export, FCL, LCL shipments. For one movement, one truck can transport one foot feet container from Mombasa to Nairobi at around 85,000 Kenyan shillings. And per week, one truck can even go three trips a week. Now, we have our trucks which are still lying shell during for Meritini for two weeks. There, there is no any movement, so you can calculate. You are losing more than 500,000 yeah, per week. E, ni NTC. Said annual inspection sticker for your vehicle have expired. It is an offense to operate a vehicle without a valid inspection sticker. You are required to log into your team's account and book for inspection for immediate effect. Just imagine, Mimi Sai, Garizangu Zimelala, Mimi Ndugiangu, Kwanza Neza Kukwambia Saizi Gariangu Ifani Kazi. Niko na gharama kwanza serikali haitaki kujua gari yako ilikuwa imelala haikulala ni lazima nilipe advance tax ni lazima niende nifanyie inspection every month mimi nachajua 1500 itabidi niongee na owner pengine anionee huruma na anaona kazi hakuna aniwevie hii charges ya hii yard sababu gari sasa hii ni mwaka mmoja na nusu ama na miezi kadhaa imelala na si mimi peke yangu Unlike CFS owners who can retrench, close down shop or move to Nairobi and Naivasha, for truck owners is a catch-22 situation as remaining with the truck is a costly affair. But then again, selling it at this time cannot fetch more than half its market value. Kwa saizi, hata nikitaka uza igari. Saizi igari, pamoja na trailer ni 3.5, 2.8. Lakini kwa sasa nikitaka kuyuza, hata 1.5 mimi nisita pata kwa igari. Kwa sababu wakuna mtu anafanya biashara. Leo ilikuwa gari ukienda kuichukua zile XUK unachukua kichwa kwa 4.5 5 million. Kwa sasa hii ukienda huko gari zimekaa hata zinamea kutu. Mtu anakwambia hata 3.5 hakuna mtu anataka kununua ma malori. Reasons behind we are still bewildered why the government should do such a thing. Because taking away services from one county to the other it means you are depriving the economic uh, condition of that county for the benefit of other county. So there are people going to benefit in Nairobi while people of Mombasa are deprived of the economy. Niko na hii kibanda changu wenye mnakiona hapa mbele yenu ni kibanda ya chakula pakubwa sana. Mimi nilikuwa napika kama bandari tatu kwa siku ama bandari nne ya chakula lakini kwa sasa napika kama bandari moja. Na hata hiyo moja kwisha ni shida. Nilikuwa na wafanyikazi sita. Ambapo hao wafanyikazi sita kila mmoja ukimlipa 300 kwa siku hiyo ni pesa ngapi? Kwa sasa si siwezi kumanenji kuwalipa mpaka nichukue kama wanne ndio waingie wengine uwatume waende hofu kwa siku nilikuwa ninaweza kwenda nyumbani na elfu kama kumi na tano kama nimenunua kila kitu lakini kwa sasa siwezi nikaziona kama ni kwenda nyumbani labda elfu mbili ama elfu tatu ndio naweka mfukoni ndio niondoke na bado sijanunua stock tumejaribu kulelea serikali yetu lakini hatuoni kama kana kwamba serikali inatusikiza sisi ni wazazi. Tumezaa tuko na watoto. Watoto wetu wanasoma. Lakini kwa sasa tunaona pahali penye tunaelekea watoto wetu hawataweza kusoma na hasa katika kaunti ya Mombasa. 
Kweli unaona kijana anakuja kwako anakuambia mama sijakula kitu tangu asubuhi. Nikatie tu hata chapati mbili tu, ni kule tu nishikilie tumbo. Na hana lolote ya kukupa. Unamwangalia unamhurumia kwa kuwa wewe ni mzazi. Lakini ukimpa leo kesho utampa uwezi kumpa kila siku. Mwaka ujao kama vile wanasema watapeleka mzigo yote iende na Ivasha. Nafikiri Mombasa itaisha completely. Hakuna kitu itabaki Mombasa. Na hao watu wote watahama, wale watabaki labda ni wenye kuzaliwa, na hao wenye kuzaliwa pia watakula nini? Na hizi mijengo zote yenye wamejenga huku watafanyia nini? Ninaomba kabisa kama uhuru anaweza. Hayue kana kwamba yeye ni binadamu kama sisi. Yeye halizaliwa kama sisi. Sisi tulimchagua kama kiongozi. Na kama inawezekana, haangalie. Hii kitu si ya mtu, atakaa miaka yake itaisha, hatawacha mwingine atakuja kutawala pia na sheria zake. Lakini yeye asiwache machozi ya watoto imulilie kwa kulala njaa. Details of the SGR contract have always been a thorny issue for the government. Especially with a growing concern that the port of Mombasa might have been signed off as collateral for the loan. The Chinese government themselves say that that is nonsense. That is, doesn't exist. Yeah, I am telling you, it doesn't exist. It's not All right. Like uh, you want a copy of the contract? I, my friend, uh, I'll get it to you tomorrow. And if you prove your point that it exists, <laughs> that there is anywhere, yeah, then you will have a point. Okay. Tafadhali jameni. Hii mambo ya porojo. Jameni. Hii ni watu ya porojo. Even though the president promised to make public the SGR contracts in December 2018, this is yet to happen. Instead, Kenyans have been treated to shocking leaks of the contract. Revelations that Kenyans were shortchanged during negotiations for the construction of the standard gauge railway. Details seen by NTV show the exaggerated cost for goods and services procured by the parties that signed the initial agreement in 2012. In the Pillars of Greed expose by Daily Nation, Kenyans were given a glimpse of what cost might have meant the taxpayer incur the 327 billion shilling cost. For instance, the grass used for landscaping cost 1 billion shillings. Furnishing of the chief engineer's offices cost 57 million shillings. Two laser jet printers cost 513 700 shillings, yet the market price for the same range between 40 to 50,000 shillings. 45-seater shuttle buses for staff was bought at an inflated cost of 25 million shillings. A state-of-the-art 45 bus would cost between 10 to 15 million shillings. The taxpayer also coughed up 239 million shillings for entertainment for the expatriates as they worked on the SGR project. Also, in the special audit report by the Auditor General on the account of the National Land Commission, the Auditor General identified irregularities and weaknesses of the SGR land acquisition process. For instance, the National Land Commission paid 221 million shillings to Kebeyo Investment, a private company for four properties that were along the Embakasi Station Railway Reserve, which means they bought back land that belonged to Kenya Railways. According to the audit report, a further 4.5 billion shillings was used to acquire land that might have been public land. Even though it is a common belief at the cost that the people of Nakuru County are the biggest beneficiary of the recently launched Inland Dry Port, this is not the case at least as of now, according to some residents of Nakuru County. Uh, my name is Benson Masharia. I'm the chairman of Friends of Devolution within Nakuru County. We had a lot of expectation when it comes to the dry port, because when we heard that they are coming to Nakuru, we knew that we are talking about job creation. Uh, the dusty town of Maimahio was to be transformed to be a major hub for the business within Nakuru County. Uh, we knew that uh, other adjacent infrastructure, like uh, the hospital industry, we look at the infrastructure in terms of uh, housing, uh, we look at the, in, in, uh, in terms of the whole issue in terms of uh, businesses that accompany the dry port that we see in Mombasa, they were to come to Nakuru. But to a large extent, things have not been the way we expected. However, the business community differs from Benson as explained by the Chamber of Commerce Nakuru Chapter Chair Stephen Thuo Njuguna. We welcome the dry port. The coming of the dry port, many think 
as the president said, it's a project from nowhere to nowhere. But we as chamber and the business community around here, we started seeing some many benefits. One, it has given a position in land. The areas around the port, like they were saying nowhere, used to go at a very low price. An acre could go to 300,000. But right now, and just a start, an acre is going for two to three million shillings. So already the landowners there have seen the difference in appreciation of their land, and it is still going up. Juguna admits that the benefits are yet to trickle down to the larger community. But he is optimistic. We take it as a source of employment. Because in all those go-downs going to be built there, in all the activities between the port and the industrial park, labor is needed. So locals stands a chance to benefit from employment. So what happens to the people of coastal counties who depended on the port for their livelihoods? I wish them the best, that they can expand. They have another port, the Lamo port that is coming up on the northern corridor. They will still have their share. We cannot kill one economy and come and improve the economy of a different area. Yes, we come from Nakuru. But our, our idea is not that we kill the Mombasa economy and then we come and uplift Nakuru's economy. By the way, today, Leo, 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 Six trains, Katia Mombasa na Nairobi. Leo he, my friend, to Mefika Kiwango ya 2020, where we are moving approximately 11 to 12 trains every day. My friends, we are ahead of our payment schedule. However, even as the president boasted of Kenya being ahead in the repayment schedule, it has been revealed that since its launch in 2017, the SGR has posted a combined operating loss of 21.68 billion shillings. This operation loss has caused the Kenya Railway Company to default an estimated 40 billion shillings payout to China's Africa Star Railway Operation Company, which runs both passenger and cargo services on the SGR. Back in Mombasa, for Rashid and Gabriel, life has been a roller coaster of hard days and tough times since the day they lost their respective jobs. Mimi bwana naweza sema na jimudu through donors bwana. Friends. Kwa sababu as a driver I have many friends. You see. Kuna wale ambao wamebahatika bado kazini, laidi wanaenda ili wanapanda, anajua huyu driver mwenzangu hayuko vizuri. Hivi una survive. Imagine na kusurvive huko sio ati every day utakuwa na kisha unakunwa chai. Ni ku survive tu. Ni ku survive ukipata kiti yote unafanya like right now nimefuatana na ndugu zangu wengine vijana wenzangu. Tunaenda shamba gari huko. Tuko na gari za cars tuna ipo tunazunguka tu tukitafuta clients tukiendesha tukipata riski lakini sasa unapata pesa kama ile unapata unapata tu ni pesa ya kukula there's nothing that you can do with that money because you don't get any extra shillings out of that earlier this year several residents of Mombasa started weekly protests over the issue of the SGR the protests would often turn ugly as the police locked tear gas canisters to disperse the protesters and engage them in running battles for hours culminating in arrest of several protesters. Wakati ni kianza familia ya, I had a lot of goals in my mind. Mabiyashara, nimekuwa ni kifungua, nimefungua. Biyashara niko nazo, nimekuwa nazo. Lakini zime collapse kwa sababu, wateja hakuna. So, nilikuwa nisha ona, in the near future, nimeanake loan zangu nilichukua, like, kuna loan nimechukua, actually last year, nafani lipe for three years. So, unapata back, nimerudi nyumbani, nimerudi nyumbani na mzigo. Barele nerudi na relief. Uneza kopa, hata mtu eneza kwenile morele kupa pesa, kijio kukazini utamrudishi. Haa, yeah. nakina sasa ndio hivyo. Weo kuka, paka inabidi ufanye jini, wanza kula mit, nino miti ya madam, kilifi, une malere itoki. Ndugu yangu ndio sababu mimi naongea na machungu sana kwa sababu nimekwambia hakuna aibu mtu akisema ukweli paka saa hizi mimi sija kula chakula mimi paka saa hizi leo saa hii itokee emergency yoyote 
sina uwezo wa kupeleka mtoto wangu hospitali mzuri. Kwa hivyo ndugu yangu ni machungu makubwa sana. Wewe ikiwa unaanza kuenukia, wewe ikiwa unajaribu, alafu unakuja unakuta serikali yako ndio inakugandamiza. Everyone out there will tell you that things are hard. And it did begin with COVID, did it? From like September last year, everyone was complaining. Business was shutting down by 7. Zimefungwa. Everyone has gone. Uh, you, everyone tells you pockets are dry. Meaning money is not in the economy. Money is somewhere else. And perhaps that's where the country or people in this country need to train their eyes. Where is that money? Because the KRA taxes people. I think Mombasa to Kendela if you have a future. Ile kusema tu kweli. Hakuna future. Kwa sababu initially we were too dependent on tourism. Tourism loyo imekufa. It is totally dead. Tukakuja, tuka evolve, tukakuwa tuna, tuna depend na port operations. Port operations no yi. Na unasikia bado wanataka kufungu wa naipasha na bado wa kisumu pia nafunguliwa. The cost of the SGR has been a controversial issue for long, but are we getting value for the money that we injected in the project? This rail does not pay. Pay and take, it doesn't. So it takes a lot of money from taxpayers' money. Those money should have gone to the education, should go to the medical, hospitals, okay, clean water, good roads. Now they have taken away from, 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 from Wananchi and give it to the Chinese. And this is not right. We Chinese have a term for this, which we call over over north clause. Over north clause. It means unfair contracts. It is the pulling of the weak by the powerful. Uh, they want to control control more. The China loan has not only negatively impacted the coastal economy, but has had an impact on the entire Kenyan economy. Even though the government reports GDP growth, the common monainchi is not feeling the growth and businesses have suffered as a result of tough economic times occasioned by heavy taxes. Because the tax rate is high. And why is the tax rate high? Because government is looking for alternative sources of revenue. Why? Because what we normally collected, we have taken a third of it, 900 billion to external sources where we got debt. The problem with the debt is that it did not do what it was supposed to do. Some of these taxes that affect the common Manainchi directly include introduction of 8% VAT on petroleum products, increased exercise tax on cash transfer from 12% to 20%, and that of calls and data from 10% to 15%, increased capital gains tax from 5% to 12.5% for betting and gaming winners. A 3% monthly turnover tax was introduced this year, targeting small-scale businesses like mamambogas, kiosks and salons. This new tax was highly contested since the tax was charged on total generated revenue, irrespective of whether they made a profit or loss. This meant for every 1,000 shillings they generated as revenue, they had to pay 30 shillings to the taxman at the end of the month. Luckily, the small-scale businesses are now exempted through the tax relief bill introduced in April to cushion them from the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Companies have also been affected by the debt in various ways, such as the government imposing new taxes and increasing existing taxes to generate more revenues. For any business to be able to thrive, it needs to have uh, tax breaks. Anytime you put a lot of barriers in the ways of small businesses, it means the entrepreneurs will choose to close shop and to go into something else. The Chinese loans also come with a lot of bilateral collaboration and businesses. However, the trade between Kenya and China is not balanced. There is a big trade imbalance between Kenya and China, as Kenya imports a lot from China, but China imports very little from Kenya. Chinese imports have more than doubled over the last five years, growing from 167.2 billion shillings in 2012 to 390 billion shillings in 2017. As a result, Chinese goods accounted for 22.6% of all Kenya's import in 2017. 
Kenya's export to China was 5.3 billion shillings in 2012, and it grew to 10 billion shillings in 2016, but declined to 9.9 .9 billion shillings in 2017. The trade imbalance is also caused by the importation of goods that can be manufactured and produced in Kenya such as ginger, fish and cement. The importation of such goods is a direct competition with local industries. When government takes loans, let's say you take a loan from China or from another big country, those loans usually have got terms. Some of them nobody even talks about. So you remember last, last year when we were talking about some fish story where fish was coming from China and uh, people were saying that we also are fishing and why are you allowing fish, you're going to affect our, uh, you know, our businesses. But the government was insistent on allowing that fish to come in. I think maybe it's still coming in. The reason is that there have been those conditions behind it that make the government want to allow that to go on. Titus Mulwa has been fishing in Lake Victoria for the past 20 years. The past three years have changed the fishing dynamics in Lake Victoria. rent na shughuli zingine za kibinadamu lakini sasa kuna samaki ambao wanasemekana wanatoka katika nchi ya China samaki hawa wameathiri pakubwa soko la samaki njini Kisumu manake Kisumu imekuwa kama ni soko kubwa la samaki kutoka nchi ya China so hiyo samaki imetu once cheap fish from China flooded the market, local fishermen started making losses as they could not match up the prices offered for imported fish. Kama kitambo tulikuwa tunapata hata kama pieces kumi. Tukipata pisa sikumi, unesa usa hata 3,500, 4,000. But sayi, samaki moja yenye tuliko tunausa 650, sayi wanachukua na 300. Ikiwa umefinya sana ni 350. So ndi umana sasa tunalia hiyo samaki metuaribia biasara. Some fishmongers have also devised a technique to deceive and suspecting buyers that the fish they are buying is fresh from the lake by placing the imported fish right on the shores of Lake Victoria. Hao ni majenti sababu wanafanya alfajiri wametoa kwa container na zinakuja kwa sababu wanajua watu wanapenda samaki kutoka hapa. Sasa wao wakija utadhania ametoka nayo hapa na kumbe agenti wake alishaenda amechukua amebeba kwa gunia ikuwa katika barafu sasa anaiweka kwa maji ile ile barafu yeyuke. Sasa ukiona bila kujua kama wewe si mwenyeji utanua moja kwa moja kwa kuamini kwamba imetoka ziwani. Lakini ikuwa wewe ni mwenyeji utaangalia gills. Kiona gills zake zikuwa nyekundu ama zikionekana zikuwa uhai, unajua hiyo imetoka pa ziwani. Lakini ukiona zikuwa pearl, ama ikionekana haina damu ndani, hiyo basi si ya kutoka ziwa la Victoria. Michael believes that the government has sanctioned the flooding of fish from China to the Kenyan market. Ni kama sirikali na leta isamaki juu from China paka hapa, hesi kuja kama government wajajua imambo. So ni kama hii sirikali ndi ina, ina leta iso samaki ama kuna wengine wa meingia na hao wanafanya combine zone. Ikiendelea hivi tutaona kama tutafanya kwa leki. Juu sasa hiyo ita affect. So itabidi watu wengi 
ile kitabakia wachache ile tu itabaki ile unapata samaki kidogo unaenda kukula kwa nyumba samaki wakiendelea kutoka China mimi naona kwamba sisi tutakuwa tumeisha manake bila shaka tutakuwa na lingine la kufanya ni kufunga virago na kutafuta labda namna nyingine ambayo TV itakuwa nini I think that we need to be more involved in these issues of public finance now more than ever because we are feeling the pinch i think perhaps no one is telling us that what you are feeling in your pocket has a lot of correlation with the bad debt policies that have been made over the past 7 to 10 years if the cycle of borrowing money and investing in mega projects some out of a price rates or unfavorable loan conditions and if nothing is done about the unbalanced business between Kenya and China Kenyans will continue facing tough economic times and many more will lose their businesses and jobs.